What's up, Elite Video Marketers? Welcome back. Today, I am here with Renee Ben. I just met Renee at a networking event here in Pittsburgh. She is the founder of Pick and Peel Stones, a fidget stone company that essentially helps people with their anxiety. Uh, if you're familiar with fidget spinners, it's kind of a similar concept. Uh, but Renee started this company back in the pandemic and it blew up and she is doing most of her marketing through TikTok and Instagram Reels. And I am so excited to dive into some of these strategies. Renee, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. It was so nice to meet you the other day. It really was. I'm, I'm so glad that we connected and your story is fascinating to me. I always think like anyone who makes a physical product successful and blow up to the extent that you have I autom like I know how hard it is retail is like an entirely different beast so many people want to tackle SaaS companies now and build like softwares and and different uh, digital tools but you have successfully built this product and are now marketing it through a lot of TikTok strategies so I want to hear from kind of from the beginning how did you come up with this idea and who were the first few people that you that kind of clicked into into place oh this could be this could be something that's a great question um I've told the story pretty frequently how I needed something my hands to do something and we um I've been kicking around this idea for a while and when I got laid off January of 2020 I, I was like, okay, well now I've got the time. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit and it was really, I couldn't find a job, nobody was hiring. And so I really had the time to focus on what I wanted this product to be. Now I had, I loved um, YouTube videos, the satisfying YouTube videos. And I went searching for a product that would give me that same feeling at home. So I figured somebody has had to have made something that you can pick at. Uh, and there was nothing. There was nothing on Etsy. There was nothing on Amazon. I mean, I looked high and low uh, for something I could give my hands a sensory feedback, something like that. Uh, and so I started to think, okay, well, what would I want it to look like? What do I want in a product? And I started brainstorming. Eventually I found the lava rocks. So uh, the lava rocks, the ones I use are basalt and they have these holes in them that are made when the lava hits water, a, a water cooled lava stone. And it makes all these little holes. And then I needed to find something that would go in there and give me that satisfying peel. Uh, gosh, I must have tried 20 things. I had Play-Doh, modeling clay, drywall caulk, silicone, puffy paint, Elmer's glue, like across the span. And I finally found something that was almost perfect, but I needed to tweak it a little bit. And once I made that change, I was like, this is it. And I took it to my girlfriend, Rachel, who knew I was sort of working on this. Uh, and I, I, once I had it, it dried overnight. I packed it in the car, went to her work, went right into her lunchroom. And I was like, you need to try this. And am I crazy or is this really fun? And she was like, let me try. And she's like, oh my gosh, yes. This is what you were talking about. I get it. And she has been from the get go, my biggest cheerleader. From the word go, she was like, this could be something really big. And so when I was not feeling it, we, during the pandemic, her and I both went on walks every day together and she'd be like, how's business? How's business? It's going to get big. And I was like, eh, is it really? <laughs> but yeah, I figured in our little circle, there's two of us who liked it. Then there's the possibility that there's going to be a wider audience. I just had to get to it. What's interesting to me about your product is that you sell these rocks in in kits. So you compile a bunch of already existing tools outside of the specific material that you use to fill the rocks, that which yes. is a, some sort of original formula. I can't even begin to understand how you stumbled <laughs> across that. But you have the rock, you have the the... What what do you call it? Paste or gel or filler? filler. Yeah, we call it a stone filler. The the stone filler that goes over the rock or the stone, and then the little tweezers and tools that you can use to pick. So you're compiling 
a collection of things, selling it in this kit, and you said you're primarily selling on Amazon, your website, and Etsy? Yes, all three. We sell on all three avenues there. So talk to me about how this thing kind of took off. What was the first aha moment that you saw on social media? I was selling on Facebook Marketplace. And my friend Rachel was like, oh, you should get on Etsy. And I was like, oh, Etsy takes such a percentage. I don't know if it's what I want to do. But eventually I was like, well, we'll give it a try. So I listed on Etsy in June. October of 2020, this sweet, sweet girl who lives, I believe, in Vermont now. Um, she's an autistic girl who reviews stimming products. And her name is Stimmy Girl. Randomly bought one of my stones. She didn't, you know, try to get something for free. She just bought a stone, did a review, and then sent me a message and said, hey, if you're interested, I did a, um, a review of your product on TikTok. I didn't know what TikTok was. <laughs> so I'm texting my daughter at college. I was like, is this a porn site? What is, am I being, am I being scammed here? What is going on? And my daughter was like, well, give me the address. It's not porn. Let me just, I'll tell you. And she looked it up and she's like, oh, it's cool. She really liked your stone. And she's doing a review of it. She's like, mom, it's got like 4,000 views. This is really cool. I was like, that's awesome. And she said, well, I'm going to go to a study group. And I said, well, I'm going to take a nap. Your dad's coming home later and I'm going to start dinner. So I took like a little nap. She went to her study group. When she was done, she called me and said it was at the million mark in two hours. It went to a million views. My store sold out. I had requests coming in left and right. So in, we went from September, I made $700 and October, November, and December, I made a hundred thousand dollars. So that TikTok video went viral. And I think the last time I checked it, it might be at 14 million. I'm not positive though. It's been a while since I checked it, but it really, I, I, I couldn't keep up. I had to upscale. I had to get as many stones as I could. And at the time I was doing Instagram and Facebook. Um, the demand was so high that my husband and I would go to work. We'd come home, we'd make stones all week. We'd get a count. And then like on Friday night, I'd say, okay, tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time, I have 250 stones that are going to go on Etsy. And they sold out in six seconds. Like they were just, we couldn't keep enough of them. So that, that is where it started all with the sweet girl and her stimulate girl account taking us viral. One thing that I think a lot of people struggle with is to establish relationships with influencers when they're starting from ground zero. Like there, it's, it's really hard to build a rapport with someone who has zero context of who you are. And one thing, like this girl just genuinely loved your product, which was like the key factor there. But for someone who maybe wants to start marketing their products through influencers on social media, do you have any, like any things that you look back on that you wouldn't do when you first were starting out? Oh, I sure do. Uh, <laughs> so most of mine was organic. People wanted it. They wanted to be associated with me. And so they would buy it regardless. They didn't reach out for free product because I wasn't giving it. I couldn't, I was selling out too quick. After Christmas, it died down and I was looking for a way to keep my product in the spotlight. Now, one of the things that pick and peel stones helps are people who have a condition called dermatillomania. And this is people who will pick at their skin obsessively and they, they scar, they get staph infections. It's really a serious, it's, it's a serious condition. I've learned so much. These people who share with me, I, I just I admire them so much for opening up to me, but I was trying to find somebody in sort of that community and they would, I would send them a product and they could pick it and sort of show the dermatillomania community what, what was out there to help them. And I did it on a whim. I just typed in dermatillomania in TikTok. And uh, I found the person with the most followers. Now this is, I'm still new to TikTok. <laughs> I found this person with the most followers. I liked her. I followed her. I sent her a message. I said, Hey, I've got this product. I'd love to send it to you to review. And she was like, yeah, that sounds great. Send it away. So went downstairs, packed it up, printed out a label. The next day I started getting these weird things on my TikTok for you page. <laughs> and I was like, why am I getting this weird stuff? 
So I did a little bit more research and I found that the person that I asked to represent my company and pick my stone was a dominatrix. Uh... <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't my best move. <laughs> that wasn't my best move. Um, super sweet. Oh my gosh. She's lovely. And she did do a, a pick for me and shows people, but that was not, that was not my best move. Not the brand alignment that you were going for. It certainly wasn't. No. And I still laugh about that, but that's yeah, I learned things on the quick and then, yeah, learn the hard way sometimes. <laughs> that's hilarious. So uh, out, outside of that misstep, how are you primarily reaching out to people? Is it through DMs or do you have like a cool, a cold email that you like to send to potential partners? What, talk me through that process. Yes. If we happen to see something on Facebook, we're tuned into a lot of the, um, the hashtags like anxiety relief, fidget stones. We, we, we follow all the hashtags that we would want our product to be on. And so, um, we are seeing the, the, the trending videos and then we will reach out to somebody if they have someone in their family or if they mention the picking that they do we reach out to them and say hey we've got this product love for you to review it we have just started an affiliate program with share sale and that has helped out a lot too that we can just we can send them all the information about the stone we can tell them about our nonprofit partners that we work with and give them a background of who we are and this i think is for me, I'm going to go a little off the trail here, but bear with me. When I invented this product, I was the only person that had this from um, October, well, like February of 2020 until December, I think of 2021, somewhere around there, somebody copied the product and they're making an inferior product. And I'm patent pending, but I can't really do a lot until I get the patent through. So what my purpose is, is to get my face out there, my company out there, and we really push on the advertising so that people will know what we stand for, who we are, and know that there are people out there who are copying what we do, but they have an inferior product. They don't work with the nonprofit organizations that we do. They don't give back to their community the way that we do. And so advertising and marketing for us has taken on a different avenue than it had just to get our name out there. Now it's like, you know, brand recognition. Totally. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting. Um, I mean, obviously if someone sees the success of a certain product, they're going to try to knock it off. And it is like, it's kind of just by chance what blows up and what doesn't now with TikTok. It's still the wild, wild west. Oh, um, yeah, I call it Lord of the flies, but wild, wild west yeah. works too. <laughs> that, that, that totally works. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about kind of where you see your brand going from here. Are you going to, do you, would you like to partner with some, some larger influencers? Are you going to pivot your strategy at all? Talk to me about that. Um, well, right now we're in the holiday season. So the strategy right now is just to get on the like, gift guides and get on people's radar. Mm -hmm. And we're trying um, with our PR company. We have a national PR company who's um, marketing us to morning shows and, and different areas like that. But as far as influencers, um, you know, they work really hard. These people have built up their audience and that should not be looked down upon. And they charge a fee and it can be a heavy fee sometimes, but there's such a balance because they've built up this huge audience. They have made their worth, you know, what they have. So for me to try to talk to an influencer, it's a lot easier now that we have the affiliate program. Um, I'm not in the position to do the upfront fees that a lot of them ask for. So we try to do things organically. We try to get out there. We have a, a like we have the side of the stones that is like, we call it the funsy side. People like me, I just like picking it's a fun time. And then we have the therapeutic side. And this is for people on the autism spectrum who need to have something to stim. They need a sensory feedback. There's these, there's an entire generation of kids who are these sensory seekers. And so we created a product for them. So we have like this dual avenue where we try to get people in just to have fun with them. And we're trying to get into the areas of um, therapies as well. That's amazing. The The mission behind this is so noble. I, that's the word that comes to mind. Uh, you're just doing good work 
in, in such an unexpected way. Like I, you know, the fidget spinners took off, but there is like, there's such a bigger, more powerful thing behind fidgeting. It's I, who would have thought it's primal when we've, we've done a lot of research. We worked with two therapists in Israel who are using our stones to actually, there are people who come to them for this skin picking disorder and they have found that they can transfer this urge to pick to the stone. And they didn't think that was even an option. They thought people pick at themselves for different reasons, but here it's just like this primal urge to pick. And if you can transfer it and not harm yourself, now you're in. Fun. It has been amazing sitting in my dining room in Pittsburgh, talking to two therapists in Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. Man. So I, I want to circle back to to the video side of things just for a moment here. In, in terms of other strategies that you see working really well in whether it's in your space or just in the other content that you consume, who are some of your inspirations that you that kind of spark the, oh, maybe we should do that. Maybe we could try that out. We actually, we have a distributor in Australia and they're called Cake, I hope I'm saying it right. It's um, Kaiko Fidgets, K-A-I-K-O Fidgets. She's putting out so much good stuff. Every time I get on there and I look at her socials, it, they're just, they're very neat. I like the ones who have senses of humor because I can identify with that. So I, I love the Kaiko Fidgets. Um, I follow not your average therapist. She's one that I follow. There's a couple different therapists who are really tuning into this um, online anxiety therapies. And these are people that I admire. I'm, I am Gen X. I have a daughter who's Gen Z. I'm just proud of the Gen Z because they're seeing that they need therapy and they're getting it. Yeah. And so they're, they're, not they're noticing these things and they're saying, you know, what can I do to help my, my brain space? What can I do to help stay calm? And they're reaching out and they're, it's going to be a whole different world because, because of this. And so I'm, uh, I'm inspired by the therapists who are out there. I'm inspired by the companies that we work for. Um, they hire and they train people with autism and different, um, uh, mental and physical disabilities. Um, they're making their lives better. So these are people I like to follow who are inspiring and who are saying, you know, what can I do for my community? So people who are helpers. I know we're from Pittsburgh and it's the Mr. Rogers look for the helpers, but I'm always going to be inspired by a helper way more than a billionaire. Absolutely. You know, as much as much flack as Gen Z gets for being on their phones and spending all this time uh, on TikTok, like the TikTok is the gateway to finding some of these characters. Like when, when else in history could you see like the humorous side of a therapist in your daily life, just scrolling? It, there is, there has never been that opportunity before. And especially for products like the ones that you're producing or e even just anything regarding the mental health space, it has never been more accessible. And I think Gen Z has like the first step to that. And it's so, I, I, it's so phenomenal to see, but in particular for someone who is like, who has this mission and the company and is trying to just make a positive change and, and help people. I think it's, it's such a cool, a cool movement to be a part of it really is and i agree they they catch a lot of flack but they're also going to be the first generation who have taken the reins and said you know what can we do to be better and taking these these tangible steps i don't know where we're going to end up i i'm in i'm in it for the ride i i just think anyone who looks down on an entire generation of people who are trying to better themselves in a mental space i can't be a, i can't be a part of that Amen to that. Uh, that is a beautiful note to wrap up on. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to share today that I did not give you a chance to? Um, no, I think the only thing I would really like people to know is we have, at least in our city of Pittsburgh, we have so many entrepreneurs who are willing to help other people. 
and there are people like yourself and there are people like we work with two nonprofit organizations who have been a tremendous help to us and I imagine these are in other cities it's just getting your name out there to be brave to talk about your product um, you know don't be embarrassed if my husband thought this was the craziest thing he ever thought of but I turned a nice profit he was on board <laughs> so don't be afraid to to self you know lift yourself up and to talk to people about what you're doing because absolutely. sometimes you never know who you're gonna meet absolutely I mean it, exhibit a right here on this right here. show. <laughs> awesome Renee thank you so much this has been great <laughs>